Hello, welcome to Conscious Construction, the Conscious Enneagram podcast. I'm Abby Robbins. And I'm Kimberly Culbertson. Uh, and today we are talking about type two. What? what? We are moving from the body center into the head center. The heart center. The heart center. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny because we have recently just yeah. <laughs> shared with each other. No, we can't share that with yeah, the world. Yeah, we can't. We have to. The difficulty that we mm. have with the heart center. Yeah. Um, as assertive types because assertive- we're feeling repressed <laughs> yeah yes that's shocking that the heart center is the harder one for us dun, dun, just a dun. mystery i wonder why <laughs> um so i think it's really important that we as teachers um all right, all like right. share our own like we're aware of our biases right and mm-hmm. and we are working with them and i think teachers who aren't at least willing to acknowledge their biases might not be quite as, uh, I don't know, worth listening to. <laughs> well, let's just go, let's just go hard today. What I will say too is um, we may have biases where we have types that are harder than others for yeah. us. And that has nothing to do with whether the type is good or bad. And every type is good or bad. Yeah. And good and bad, really. And so um, that's really more about us than it is about the heart well, center. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But I think it's so. important that like, we're up front. Like, mm-hmm. we know that these types pose uh, more difficulty for us. Um, you know, we've talked about the two, and we both have some, like, blind spots around two. And so we spent some t- more time on so thanks this. thanks for tuning in. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, I'm saying all this because we, we spent more time preparing yeah. Yeah. for this conversation than we had to for eight, nine, and one. Because right. we both had so much more um, uh, fluency in it. And so... Uh, the way that we have been talking about the types is with the dominant center, the repressed center, or the stance, and the conflict resolution style. Um, so, Kimberly, why don't you start us off with the three? Like, what are what are the like the beats for type two? The beats. I don't know what you mean by that, but the two is in the heart center. Yes, this is exactly what I meant by the beats. <laughs> so, okay, so the heart center, um, the dominant center, is that heart emotional relational piece. Um, The key struggle for people in the heart center is shame. So in the body center, we talked about anger and anger comes out differently for all three types in that body center. So as we round over into that heart center, we're talking about shame and how does shame kind of shape the fears and the desires Mm. and the reactivity of the two, three, and four. Yeah. So we'll definitely dive more into shame in each one of these. And then we have the, uh, compliant stance right um, that's what you meant by the beat like yeah, all three all three oh. it's okay okay so we also mentioned that you guys uh, are here for our work in progress yes, today we are we're recording this during mercury <laughs> retrograde so there may be some issues that's okay <laughs> so the stance is the compliant stance yes which which equates to um being thinking repressed and we'll talk more about what that means it doesn't mean people are dumb don't worry (laughs) um that's always like the fear um i think uh, that fear definitely comes out more with ones when you tell a one that they're (laughs) thinking repressed they get really upset oh man yeah um but uh and then twos are in the positive outlook conflict resolution style so we have heart compliant positive outlook for yeah, that is definitely a phrase that captures the two. It really does. Yeah. I re- I'm really enjoying this way of talking about the types because I do think that even in the, just those three statements, mm-hmm. you get a really wonderful picture. So let's let's dive into being heart-centered. Yeah, absolutely. What does that mean for the type two? Yeah, so the type two is probably the one in the heart center that looks the most, mm-hmm. like absolutely. you would think like the heart center, loving, relational. Yeah. Um, because the two has... And jumping ahead a little bit, that compliant stance, and they're very others oriented. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. they're very concerned, not only about like how you are if you're in relationship with the two, yeah, but how are they in relationship to how you are? <laughs> yeah, that so, is the that's the trick, right? Like that's where this this heart centeredness and this focus on being relational. Um, this is really where the two kind of bases their identity, right? Right. It's not just, are we good, but like, are we good and I am good because we are good. Right. And I'm good because I know how to help you be good. 
And mm, this is, you know, it's yeah. the heart center is the, still the center of intelligence. And yeah. so their knowing comes out of that yeah. relational, emotional, like being tuned in. Mm-hmm. So one thing that's true about twos is they often know what a person wants or needs even when that other person doesn't know because yes. they're so tuned into their people. Yeah. Now, unlike the nine, they're not necessarily tuned into everybody equally. Yeah. They know who their people are and they're going to like mm-hmm. fight and die for those people. Um, but if you are in relationship with the two, they are going to be very cued in to yeah. where you are emotionally and where you guys are relationally. And they anticipate needs yeah. without even thinking about it. It just comes with ease and grace. It just naturally comes to them. And they don't mm-hmm. even really have to think about it, yeah. which is why they're not in the head center. They're in the heart center. And they, oh, yeah. they have that knowing, that intelligence that comes from that. And one thing that's really hard for twos is that unless they're in a relationship with another two, mm-hmm. none of their people will do that as well for them yeah. as they do for their well, friends and, and I family. Well, and I think what's really powerful to think about for twos is that even when twos are in relationship with other twos, um, they're still not, that they're still kind not, of messy in some way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, cause, and this is, this is kind of the thing, right? Is that it's not just that twos are so in tune with other people's needs and, and other people just don't have that same way of attuning. Um, it's the fact that twos go out of their way to obscure their own needs, right? (laughs) So even when twos are in relationship with each other, there's still kind of this missing of each other Mm -hmm. that happens Mm -hmm. because of the twos repression of their own needs and desires. And so when that lines up, and I think maybe you can see it most clearly when twos are in relationships with other twos, it's (laughs) like, yeah, this other two may be really going above it, what they feel like is above and beyond to like reach this person, you know, two number one, two A, we'll call it, (laughs) two A isn't receiving that the same because they're not in touch with their own needs. Well, and also part of their identity structure, especially for twos that haven't done a lot of work, Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is that they need to be the one that's meeting needs and they have a hard time receiving care. Yes, absolutely. And so if you're two twos in relationship, Mm -hmm. the thing that you do to make sure that they're okay, which is you're taking care of them, is going to actually make them maybe a little bristly because they don't want to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. They want to do the caring. And this is really at the Mm -hmm. heart of how twos are playing out shame. So yeah, let's talk about that. So two, so all the heart types, right? All the heart types. When it comes to shame, there are other ways of talking about this. The narrative sometimes talks about the emotional filter of the heart center as um, sadness or grief at the loss of connection. Um, and oh, and so it's so much nicer, <laughs> right? But but the reality yeah. is the same. The same. Yeah, <laughs> like you can call it whatever you want. Put it in a pretty package. <laughs> no one cares. It's the same thing. We're we're essentially to put it in very like concrete terms. It Sweet. is. Um, if you're in the heart center, you're over here, you see yourself as down here oh. and everyone else is here, Boo. right? Now that's not the reality of the situation. <laughs> that's just your experience of it. And so you Boo. have to do X, Y, and Z to get back up here. And twos, what twos are doing is they are repressing their own needs and being actively helpful in order to go from here back up to here. Right. And subconsciously, part of what twos are doing is they are they're meeting all your needs in hopes that someone will reciprocate so Mm -hmm. that their needs can also be met. But then if that even happens, they have to reject it. They they have a hard time receiving it. Yeah. Yeah. It's you know, they're essentially working through this shame. They're trying to to balance the scales. Yeah. It's like they don't think they deserve it. And if you have to take care of them, you might reject them eventually like they're Mm -hmm. afraid of losing love or not being loved yeah and they are trying to earn love yeah by serving and by being above and beyond and being so careful and anticipating your needs and so if you're doing that for them then they're not getting the chance to earn yeah that low self you know worth yeah is they have to buoy it with that um Mm. that self image of being helpful and yeah. being, being like the best wife or the best friend or the best, you know, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like we've talked, you know, in what we've talked about so far, we've given a really clear picture of 
uh, even though we were just kind of originally started out talking about the heart center and being mm -hmm. having that be the dominant triad and this emotional filter of shame or sadness or grief at this loss of connection. Sure. Um, We've also kind of inadvertently talked very clearly about the about compliance, the stance. right? Yeah. The stance, right? Um, so let's talk about how the stance being compliant. What does that mean when you are talking about it being thinking repressed? Yes. Let's talk about that. Now we talked a little bit about this with the one, mm -hmm. um, but essentially it's that you are outsourcing your your thoughts um, to something else. Right. Mm -hmm. So somebody else is doing the real thinking for you. Somebody else is making your decisions You and you are complying to that. Now, with ones we talked about how that usually comes in the form of some sort of morality or spirituality or some sort like of rubric external or rubric. Yeah. An yeah. external scaffolding, if you will, um, that, that they then comply to. Now, twos being in the heart center that is much more relational. So they are complying to the needs of the relationship. So what what they are complying to could change instant to instant depending on who they're relating to in that moment. Right. And what, what is it that you need from them? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And that can be very disorienting for twos. Like if you can imagine your entire – like. It, it, it may sound like an over-exaggeration, but I really don't think it is to feel like <laughs> your entire life being oriented around a different thing every 45 minutes, right? Where I'm thinking about this person and so all of my life is then consumed by this relationship. But now I have to go to work and then my life is consumed by my relationships at work, right? Um, and I, I think that twos really experience a lot of that because they are so relationally focused and often twos have a lot of relationships and twos are very often right. very social. It doesn't have to be the case, but it is very common. Yeah. And I think then you get into subtypes a little bit, which we're not really doing in these, but like, I think even if you have like a one-to-one -to -one two mm -hmm. and they go to work, they want their partner, their key people to think they're yeah. good at work. And yeah. so it, there's still, there's now there's kind of two people they have to mm -hmm. please. Um, but that, that sense of, I need to know what you need so that I can meet that need so that you will feel that I'm good and worthy of love. Yeah. That is how the compliance mm -hmm. plays out. And I think, you know, you said they're thinking repressed and they're outsourcing their thinking. And I think that is true, but they're also, they're not, Dumb, like you said, no, no, and they're no, doing thinking, but what they need in this in the compliance stance is input, because I think in the compliance stance there's a distrust of your own thinking. Yes, absolutely. And so you can be in the compliance stance and overthink everything. Yeah. <laughs> so you're not not thinking, but you the are. The thinking's not weighing, productive. Yeah. Is the way to like phrase it. Yes, and you're weighing you're weighing everything, and you want opinions. But with the two specifically, the two needs the opinion of whoever they're across from that they're mm -hmm. trying to mm -hmm. earn their love and yeah. and place with. And they over rely on yeah. that instead of their own right inner authority. Yep. Yeah. And we'll see this play out with a slightly different flavor once we get around to six, sure. who's the last type in the compliance stance. Um, yeah. But yeah, this idea that like you need your own input to show up, um, that's a really powerful piece for all the types in the compliance stance. Yeah, absolutely. Sure. Okay, so heart center, compliance stance. Let's talk about how those two <laughs> things play out when we round around to the um, conflict resolution style. Yeah, now this is one we actually spent some time like looking things up because... <laughs> It was um, it was a little bit more challenging for us, I think, to think through conflict I, resolution style for type two and how it really shows up. Yeah, because one of the things that we talked about is that the type two really doesn't like to be in conflict. And because yeah. they have that compliant kind of nature, if you find yourself in conflict with a two, they're often trying to get right back out of conflict by complying with whatever it is you think you need from them. Yeah. And so when we're talking about conflict resolution style, remember that we are talking about what makes a conflict feel resolved yeah. to this person. So they're in the positive outlook, mm -hmm. conflict resolution style, but what they need for it to be resolved specifically is some positivity around their role mm -hmm. in the conflict. Yeah. Like you, they need you to get back to the place where you see them as good and worthy of love yeah. and you've seen their point and you know that they were trying hard. Mm -hmm. Oh you know? yeah, that's so <laughs> big for twos. Yeah. Well, and I'm even having this thought now in the moment because we also talked about um, 
and I think this has a lot to do with twos being in the heart center and being so relational. Conflict is a relational issue. For sure. So yeah. twos are much more attuned to it than either sevens or nines who are also in the positive outlook triad. Um, and they are compliant. So they are, they are, uh, kind of surrendering themselves to the other person when in conflict. And what we talked about is like, there's some sense that uh, twos are kind of front loading the conflict resolution, right? Like yeah. they're, they're doing more work than either sevens or nines in order to prevent conflict from yeah. ever happening, right? Because they're, they're so sensitive to they're it. They're doing it by anticipating your needs exactly. and anticipating what's going to upset you so that they can not do that. Yes. So that you don't end up in conflict. And then when you do, that means they've kind of failed in that like weird game they're playing. And then what comes is shame. Because yeah. unlike, you know, the nine or the six, which are in different mm -hmm. centers, you know, you go right into that shame response. I wasn't able to stay out of conflict. Yeah. They're going to know that I'm not worthy of love. Mm -hmm. then, and so mm -hmm. what they needed to resolve the shame is to get that positive view of them back. Yeah. Yeah. And you can see here as we talk about these things, how closely one and two are related, mm -hmm. right? Because they, they are there. They could be wings of each other. That sure. energy can be really close. And they're both in this conflict. They're both in this compliant stance, right? So they're really feeding off the other people that they're in relationship with. Right. Um, and really, by the time you actually engage in a full-on conflict with a two, um, often twos can be really explosive because yeah. they've done so much work front loading the relationship so that they, so that conflict is avoided before it even crops up. Um, it's, it's almost like an affront that you would dare be in, in conflict. conflict. <laughs> yes, no, exactly. And so we don't and, often see it until twos are kind of pushed to that yeah. low side of eight yes. and then they can yeah, yeah. be really, um, you know, if you're Aggressive. in conflict with a two, they are stressed. They are in their refuge point. They are having a hard time. And that's where that eight energy can really come out and, and yeah. feel a little more explosive. You get a lot of the martyrdom complex with twos. Like, mm -hmm. you know, you're mad at me about this after all I've done for you. Like, if you've ever right. said those words, you might be a two. Yeah, um, you immediately start to get a list of, of their... These are the reasons why I am worthy of love. I've yeah. done this and this and this and this and this and this and this. And now you're complaining about this because they're yeah. building their case to get back to that. And it really has space. nothing to do with the conflict in all. reality. <laughs> it has to do with how they're responding yeah. to the conflict. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So whew, I do it's love, a doozy for twos. We haven't been talking about the arrows. Of, and, yeah. But like I love... Abby uses the phrase, the place of refuge, yeah. um, instead of like stress or, or unhealth or mm -hmm. whatever other t teachers use. But I think twos sometimes need to go towards eight yeah. because they're not advocating for their needs and they're, be they're not being appreciated and they're being overrun. And twos so when have they the go sloppiest to the eight, boundaries. Like, yeah. And eights are where that can be corrected. Yeah, so they're going to a refuge point to, to say like, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I have made these 10 concessions mm -hmm. and you haven't yeah. made any. And so now I'm angry about it. And that anger often is valid. Um, Although it's also sometimes self-inflicted by a lack of boundaries. Exactly. Especially if you haven't done a lot of work, it's really easy to let your boundaries move just so that someone will stay happy with you mm, yeah. and to avoid conflict. But then what ends up happening is you get more and more, you know, stepped on yeah. until you have to break at some point. Yeah. And I think yeah. what happens, right, is like each in, in each of the types as we go around the circle, right, we are training people how to see us. Absolutely. And how to respond to us. And this is a trap for all of us. And, and it, it never ends well. But what <laughs> the way it plays out for a two, right? They, they train other people to see them, to see their baseline as helpful. Oh, think nothing of it. Oh, I just want to be of service. Oh, I just want to help you out. Right. Yeah, I'm just so, so happy to do this. Yes. I'm, yeah. I'm so happy to do this. They're really down. Like, even though they're continuing to show up in these ways, they're really downplaying what they're doing. Like, oh, it's no big deal. Right. They want it to seem like it's this effortless, whatever. And so... Often, it's actually a lot of effort. It's an extreme <laughs> amount of effort, right? And and yeah. because they're trying to play it as this effortless thing, most people, people believe it. Yeah, people <laughs> believe it. And then twos are upset that people aren't acknowledging what they're bringing to the table. Right. And that's that's a real trap for twos. And so mm -hmm. the, the, the catch is 
that if you're going to express how much effort you're putting into something, what you're really expressing is your own needs. Like I'm doing <laughs> all of this yes, and it's a lot. Okay. So if it's a lot, maybe you need to take a break. What? Yeah. Maybe you need to step Shh. back and do less yeah. for other people. And, That's and they, hard for a two. The two needs a lot of safety yeah. to acknowledge their needs, to take a break. Yeah. Um, but I think one thing that's worth mentioning when we're talking about this pattern with the two mm -hmm. is that oftentimes they're doing everything that they're doing and they're, they're doing it more or less happily. They're happy to have that role. Yeah. Um, one thing that Reese and Hudson say in their book is that when a two walks into a room, they immediately are looking for what, do, what do people need? What, mm -hmm. what can I, where can I serve? And if there's not a need, they kind of are drift, um, which is part of how I know I'm not a two, <laughs> <laughs> but, <laughs> um, the thing is that they're doing this and they, they're happy about it, but often there is a hope that someone will do something that they can't name because their typology mm -hmm. and their persona mm -hmm. is not allowing them to name it and they haven't done the work to name it. Yeah. And so what's happening is they're like, I'm going to do these 10 things in hopes that somebody will do this one thing. But yeah. that one thing is not expressed it's, it's kind of a mystery. Known. Yeah, and so... It they might not even know it. And even if they... I mean, the thing is, if the two doesn't know it, somebody could be doing it and the two can't receive it. <laughs> They're still it. rejecting it. Yeah. yeah. So what I think is really important if you're doing work as a two is to recognize that just because you did 10 good things... Mm -hmm. doesn't mean anybody's obligated to do one good thing for you if they're not available for it. Yeah. And I've run into this a lot where it's like, I did these 10 things you didn't ask for, and all I need is a ride to the airport, and you can't give that to me? Well, I'm not available to go to the airport, so yeah. I literally can't. But what's happened is there's this scaffolding where they feel like an expectation mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. they've earned a certain amount of something, only that is not an agreed upon yeah. deal that you've made. Yeah. Versus if someone says, like, hey, I would, I would really love a ride to the airport, and in return, could I do the dishes for a week, you know, so that there's like a mm -hmm. break in labor. You can you can do that, but if you have to do it. And so there's this kind of hopeful transaction sometimes yeah. with an unhealthy two. Well, where the, it's a secret transaction that yeah. the person doesn't know until you don't do it. And I might even push, if, <laughs> if you're a two and you're watching this, I might even push you like one step farther, which is to... This, this is always how it's going to be. I was like, no, go further. Go Kim. further. <laughs> it's for your own good. I'm like, but it's nice and it's positive and yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my god, we are hilarious. <laughs> um, and and I think that th this might be a piece that is really like you set up this beautiful thing where like, hey, could you take me to the airport? I can do these things in exchange. Right. Um, I think that they're like that's a great way to like make the covert overt right. Like the right. thing that you're doing secretly bring it out into the open and then we can really manage it and work with it. But I think a bigger step here for a two might be to just say, I need to ride to the airport. <laughs> yeah. I need to ride to the airport. Are you available? Right. The, the full stop. Full Are stop. you available? Question mark. Wait for their response. If they say no, accept that right. as the answer. Like that they're, they're like someone else's unavailability is not and a reflection of who you are. It's not a rejection of your character or yeah. your worthiness. Or, or a condemnation of your relationship. Mm -hmm. It is simply, I have to work that day. Or, right. But it also could be, I don't like driving people to the airport. I don't want to. Yeah, Whereas, where it could be two, any of those. If they were available, it would be physically hard to not yeah. meet the need. Like someone else might be like, no, I don't do that. I don't yeah. want to. And that's fine, right? So as a two, <laughs> to ask that sure. and to accept the answer fully, whether it's yes or no, and then be yes. done, like then, then what you're doing is you're allowing the other person the space to then ask for what they really need for it when, it, when they need something from you. And what you. they actually want instead of what you already done in hopes that it would right so the labor. again it's that like okay well you're offering this thing i don't really need or care about mm -hmm. like this is a this is a real issue with twos they they you know i think generally twos are pretty good at anticipating other people's needs but often twos are are offering something that nobody asked for right and that can be a really hard um, and that itself can feel like a push of boundaries. Yeah. 
Like, I didn't need you to do my dishes. I just wanted you to sit with me on the couch. Yeah, Why are you exactly. doing my dishes? Exactly. Yeah. And so this is what, you know, this is where that, like, kind of sloppiness of boundaries comes up for type two is that, like, oh, there's something happening yeah. that's not, yeah. like, in your eagerness to meet someone else's needs, you're actually missing the point completely. Right. Um, and, and I think to Abby's point, people caring for you doesn't have to be a transaction at all. Exactly. There's often a transactional thinking, which I think sometimes it's okay to say like, here's, here's what I would like to, to exchange, you yeah. know, but it doesn't have to be that. Yeah. You don't always have to earn your place and your care with yeah. service. Yeah. And that, that's a really important message mm-hmm. to the two. Yeah. You know? And it, and it's brave for twos to just state what they need and give people a chance to meet it. Yeah. But the hard part when, when you're a person who doesn't, name your needs well mm-hmm. is that you do the hard work to name it and sometimes people say like no i'm not available for that and, that and this just is this sucks, is a big but I it's mean, true it's they, they're not <laughs> and this is where the real like this is the real heart of the work for two yeah, like you yeah. have to name your needs and then you have to trust yourself to meet those needs when necessary mm-hmm. right okay so and so can't take you to the airport like what's stopping you from getting an uber right Right. Like this is the this is the next step. Like, would it be nice and like relationally enriching for someone else to take you like to a friend or a partner to take you to the airport? Sure. Absolutely. But when, you know, we get down to brass tacks, you can get an Uber. Yeah. Like you can meet your own Mm -hmm. needs. And I think that that is the piece that. Both and of these so things can are. They, if you don't want to go to the airport that day, and they're asking you for the ride. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I think there's something really important about these two, this two sides of like yeah. asking for what you need and and allowing the answer to be no, while also feeling confident enough to handle your own needs, right? Like naming the need, and then having it met either by yourself or by someone else, and not feeling like that is a condemnation of who you are, right? Like. Right. And even, you know, so many times with twos, it can feel like anytime their needs are met, they're dropping lower and lower. Right? And that's yeah. not, that's it's not, not the true. Case. It's a lie. Yeah. yeah. And, and so there's a lot of space here, um, for twos to, to examine, um, you know, kind of what are you doing and why, right? right. It's a big question. Like, why are you doing this? Did someone ask you to do it? Like, okay, then if not, then maybe chill out. Um, but I think if you're in relationship with twos, it can be really, really valuable to, to enforce those boundaries. Sure. Right. Like, uh, my mother-in-law is a two and there has been a pattern where, um, she wants to come over and help us clean our house. But like, we're like, yes, our house is dirty. Like that could be on a list of (laughs) needs, right. That we have, but we don't need her to do that for us. And that's not how we want to relate with her. And so Danielle did a great job of like saying, Hey, no, we don't want you to come over and clean house. Why don't we go get lunch? Right. Right. And so it was this amazing, like setting of a boundary while maintaining maintaining connection. Yeah. Yeah. And so I think that that's really, you know, that's just like a throwing that out as a, um, a little tip. If you're in relationship with twos, like set boundaries, maintain boundaries, enforce boundaries. Encourage them in- to experience love from you when they didn't do anything for you. Exactly. Yeah. Which is huge. Mm-hmm. So important. Um, well, I think that's what we have on twos. Yeah. That that went way better than I expected. This was great. <laughs> I know. You really set the expectations low. Yeah. Well, under My promise- positive outlook self was like, <laughs> what are we doing here? Under promise, over deliver. That's the, that's the plan. Boom. Here. Um, thank you so much for watching. Uh, be sure to hit subscribe, click the like button. If you found anything on this helpful, drop a comment below. Let us know what you think about twos. If you are a two, did we hit the mark? Let us know. Um, and yeah, you can find all my stuff at conscious construct, conscious And I'm at Kimberly and coach.com. Yeah. Thanks y'all. Cheers.